Hi, Scott Orlin with Cinema Magazine. Uh, one of the films here at Sundance is called Ma Belle, Ma Beauty, and I am here with the star of the film, Lucien Guinaud. Bonjour. Thank Bonjour. you so much for being here. Talk a little bit about, as an actor, having your film be part of the Sundance Film Festival, but sadly, because of this pandemic, you can't be there to participate. Yeah, obviously, it's a dream to go there. But also, they, they made such a wonderful effort to give us the sense that we were participating with the virtual world that they created. Um, and they've been very, um, very present on Zoom, obviously, to, um, yeah, to keep in touch with us and to make us feel part of it, which was wonderful. Yeah. Um, I want to break down the, the movie for a little bit, because watching it, it was quite fascinating, the examination of a modern relationship. That, you know, there are these traditional values that we think we have about what what love and what a relationship is supposed to be. And you guys kind of blow it up a little bit. And it feels so normal. Well, I would say that um, it's a question that we ask ourselves. Um, are we really supposed to spend our life with one person um, because it's normal or if we find this one person and we really feel like it till the end of our lives, um, is it because it's, it's a convention or is it because it was supposed to be like this? Um, these are questions that we ask ourselves. Would you agree? Um, and then, so these guys, I mean, they're artists, um, except for Lane, the character of Lane, who's not an artist, but she's also very open, very laid back. And um, they just explore, they just go with the flow, what they're feeling. What did it teach you, though, uh, or did it enlighten you in any way about your own relation, about your own assessment, about your thinking about relationships? Did going through this because your character is so giving towards his partner? I only want the best, and if this is what you need, I'm open to that. Yeah, well, this uh, level of dedication and selflessness is quite exemplary. It's quite beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful to explore that. Uh, but also, I would say that what it, the lesson I get from, from the whole script and from the whole relationship is that, you, um, I mean, we know it, but you don't want to rely on the other like if you're in love with someone you just you can't just rely on this love to make your life complete and to nourish you um, and I think the characters of Bertie and Fred who are really driven by music who are really dedicated to their art and their values um, are actually happier and are able to have this healthy relationship and I think mm -hmm. that's what really touches me you mentioned music, and when we first meet your character in the movie, he's playing guitar, and I have to compliment you, your voice, it, it was a beautiful song that you were singing. Later on, we see you playing trumpet. So how much has music infiltrated your own life? I mean, how good of a musician are you? Um, uh, well, thank you first. Uh, I've, I've got a band, and I play my own songs. Um, so I sing and I play guitar. I've always absolutely loved music. And trumpet was an instrument that I had sort of a dream to be able to play, but you know, you never start because life goes on and goes too quick. And then suddenly when Marion sent me the script and the character was playing trumpet, I was like, okay, I'm buying a trumpet now. And I'm starting now. I had six months and um, I actually managed to play the tune that you see me playing around the fire. And I was like, one of the big challenges, one of the big goals. And I was so happy to do that. <laughs> As part of the backstory is that the, you guys have all met in New Orleans and having been to New Orleans, it's this jazz capital and the, the music infuses every aspect of, of life there. So what what is the music that inspires you? I mean, I don't know, were you familiar with jazz prior to this or is there another form of music that is your expression? Um, I got familiar with jazz quite late. When I was younger, I really didn't like it uh, for some reason. I couldn't understand it, probably. Uh, then I, I, I started loving uh, Errol Gardner or um, Duke Ellington, uh, Sidney Bechet. 
Um, and then it's going to sound really cheesy. <laughs> it's going to make Marion laugh a lot, but I'm a huge fan of Louis, Louis Armstrong, which is really, it's even a joke in the film. What a wonderful world. That's a great song. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, Duke Ellington. Um, I, when I have a party or a dinner, I always put one of their album, Duke and Ella, and people just love it. It just works. It's highly beautiful. I, one of the aspects of the movie that made me incredibly envious was that house. And it's always talked about, when you look to buy a place, location, location, location. And in a movie, sometimes it's the same thing. Where are you setting your story? Where was this house? And, oh, my God, it, it, <laughs> it was not only romantic, but it was incredibly just aesthetically beautiful. Yeah, well, so um, I'll do is this place that is known for a cotton and uh, pottery. They do these pots, you know, for, and uh, it's quite arid, but lavish at the same time. And um, it's in the middle of these mountains, these sandy mountains with the vineyards and stuff like that. And, um, but actually it's a, it's, it's a very interesting thing. Um, this theme about, the, about beauty is, um, I think with Marion, what one thing that touched me and I, that I think Marion wanted to say is that happiness and beauty is not just about sumptuous um, surroundings. Um, you need to you need to be dedicated to your values and fight for something maybe. Otherwise, just this beauty, like when Lane tastes one of the, um, the grapes and it doesn't taste that good because it's supposed to be. Um, transformed into wine. It's supposed to be an effort put into it in order to do this wonderful wine that you see us drink. You see what I mean? Yeah, oh, no, totally. Uh, I want to ask you, because obviously for many people are going to be introduced to you in this movie, but you've had a career prior to this. But not only are you an actor, which I think is really interesting is how complex we are, is you're also a coach. And I think you have the Namaste uh, Institute in, in Switzerland. Talk a little bit about what that fuels for you. I mean, to help other people kind of find their own voice to be able to stand up in front of other people and either act or just be public speaking. Yeah. Well, um, so basically when, when I studied acting, um, when I was very young, uh, I, I saw how it was transforming me and how it was good for me uh, socially and even uh, in terms of self, you know, love and um, self-acceptation. And I could see how it was affecting the other people also. And I also, uh, I always, I was as focused on how to do the exercise properly, how to grow as an actor, as being able to bring this to someone else. Like, I always wanted to, I always loved making other people feel better or heal. And uh, um, learning, learning the art of acting is a massive work on yourself and letting go of, you know, too much shyness, too many blocks, blockages, you know. So at one point after, after training, I decided that I, I could actually today we do the auditions by our self tape by, um, by a video. So I decided that I could go back to my family, um, do the videos, uh, do the auditions by video, and um, and yes, yeah, start start giving that back to people. And uh, it also keeps me in training. I feel like every time I give a coaching session, I keep training. I keep being in the zone. Of authenticity and, and yeah. So, if there are young actors watching this now, what is the biggest fear they need to overcome about acting? What is the obstacle that you see in a lot of young potentials that they're doing wrong? Is there something that they can try and prepare for now? Hmm. I'll try to answer your question. Um, I think I think one one should focus on 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 the objective, which is telling a story. And if you, 
puts your entire attention to the story you're giving, then there's no space for fear. And also um, one big lesson that I got through training in London is that there's a sense, there's easily a sense of competition. Even between two men who don't have the same profile at all and will never be cast for the same thing. And this competition is really not healthy. It's not helping. I think um, um, something really switched uh, in my life when I saw all other potential actors as collaborators, as friends, storytellers. And we started, you know, sending auditions to each, each other and supporting each other. I think it's. I think it can be very overwhelming to see it as a sort of world competition, when one can like sort of win, rather than a community of people who want to tell stories. And um, luckily, maybe you'll be the right cast, the right person to to be a character, to interpret a character. Well, I, Lucien, thank you for not having fear to talk to me on this interview. Uh, congratulations on Sundance. The film is called Ma Belle, Ma Beauty. And this is Scott. Till next time.